afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Is it on? Okay, good. Uh, so Selden, it's an open source machine learning platform. It pulls in behavioral data, social data, contextual data, time data, and, out, and builds predictive models at, with, at scale uh, to output recommendations uh, and predictions. We released an open source platform uh, in February. It's a product of over four years R&D from an exceptional team of data scientists. We tried and tested in the enterprise environment, uh, serving billions of uh, recommendations per month. Uh, we've worked in media, advertising, e-commerce, um, but we've built a very generic platform uh, that can serve a broad range of applications, uh, including finance, insurance, and healthcare. So, let's start with the premise. Um, as Dr. Rand spoke about earlier, um, around um, the analogy with electricity. Like all technologies that have come before, AI is on track to becoming commoditized. Despite some incredible progress in closed environments, some of the most effective AI is already open. This levels a playing field and fuels an acceleration of machine intelligence. So let's ask for a quick show of hands. Uh, who in this room believes that AI is a, a key strategic part of their business success now or within the next three years. See most of the people in the room. Uh, so keep your hand up, or put your hand up again then, uh, if uh, you're happy to outsource uh, that to a third party completely. So no data scientists internally. Okay, so there's very few people in the room. That's good news for me. That's one of the reasons why uh, we created Selden. So I'm gonna talk about the importance of open source AI how seldom works, commercial applications, and open AGI network. So first, how do we add data science or machine learning to our company? First, you could build it in-house. So you get total control there. Uh, you, know, you, you can build whatever you want. Uh, but there are so many different uh, algorithms. There's thousands or millions or infinite algorithms if you consider all of the algorithms that your team can build internally. This takes a lot of time, and it requires a lot of data scientists. And data scientists are in short supply. Machine learning uh, specialists are even shorter supply, and they're expensive, so it's a high cost. So this is why people create third-party um, APIs. So a company can push their data into uh, an engine in the cloud, and that would do all of the complex uh, handle all of the complexity and deliver the output, the recommendations, or the predictions. The problem with that is you get far less control. That was meant to be an X, actually. Something's come out funny over there, but far less control, uh, limited uh, model selection, and uh, uh, it takes far less time to actually implement. Um, it doesn't cost so much. So why did we create an open source platform when there are lots of third-party uh, APIs out there? It's really down to control is one of the points. People actually want to be able to solve that, that final sort of 10% of the problem, the domain-specific problem, which is relevant for their business. They will trust a platform that has industry-specific models that have, have been proven to work in media, in finance, in e-commerce, for example. Uh, people already want to um, build data science teams to actually solve that final piece of the problem. Uh, so with an open source solution, you can get there much quite quicker. And one of the things we looked at with, um, with, with Selden is in the data science space, if you look further, like lower down the stack, the uh, technologies that have become the standards uh, are open technologies. So things like Hadoop uh, replacing the sort of oracles and Windows uh, databases. And privacy on that point is a very big um, issue as well. So people want to, um, if they have sensitive data, they're far less willing to push that into the cloud. So how Selden works. It isn't an OS library. We work with those. It's a full stack solution. Uh, includes the best of open source and uh, algorithms uh, that we build ourselves. The first step is you uh, connect data. So the data can be pulled in from uh, websites, mobile apps, point of sale, uh, any digital environment. And that can contain metadata, which um, gives you context such as time, location, et cetera. And that data is used to train a model. So the models 
uh, are a combination of behavioral data and, uh, and, and the algorithms that produce them. So the models are continually uh, generated in a in an updated in a recursive way. And that's really where the true value lies. The, tra the value lies in the, in the models, not necessarily in uh, more so than the data and the, and the algorithm. So the models are used to uh, output predictions. And when you output predictions, it's important that those predictions are being used for a, um, a, you know, a good reason. And that reason is to boost whatever KPIs that are important for your business. And so it's important to have build a system that is monitoring those KPIs and adapting the, um, the models uh, accordingly and training the models accord accordingly. So you need to have a feedback loop. So you're constantly optimizing and you're constantly updating the models based upon the impact of those models on the, um, uh, on the KPIs. And just remember, there are thousands of potential models that you could be using. So it's very expensive and time consuming for uh, in-house development teams to manually try each of those different um, solutions. So that's really the problem we're trying to solve. And um, I'll just give a little explanation of how it sort of used to work and how um, we um, can help uh, people to uh, speed up the process. So you have a starting point, and you have a test, and you have a best. I suppose uh, you could look at that as like an A and a B. So you know, you'd be familiar with an A-B test to uh, select which is the best uh, color for your sign-up button, for example, on a website. So the usual way of doing things is to try uh, the A and B, and you, and you pick the winner, and then you go with the winner. Uh, the problem is uh, context changes. Uh, you, know, you, you have uh, different pe people have different tastes based on the day of the, the week, uh, whether it's the weekend, seasonal changes. Uh, you have different models which work better in different environments. So you have high churn um, algorithms which work better for financial news, or you have lower churn uh, predictions which work better to decide what to, you should um, uh, watch on, on Netflix on a Saturday night. So based upon those context changes, you need to change models. So rather than having just one test and uh, a best solution, you can try multiple different models uh, in, in, in real time and select the winner. So this enables data science teams to save a hell of a lot of time because they're not uh, manually selecting each of the and testing each of those different models. And ultimately, that enables them to uh, go to market quicker and improve their KPI performance. So just a very quick case study. Um, so in the media space, we've done most of our work so far in the media space. And uh, we, we pull in vast amounts of, uh, of, of data uh, in those types of environments. And it's a very important in news to have um, an understanding of the impact of uh, someone's action on a piece of breaking news that maybe doesn't have that much um, like historical data associated with it. Uh, so this is a, you know, actually a, a, a sort of the lower end of what we could push to in terms of, of this platform, either in-house or, or this is something we can host as well. Uh, so this is the, the kind of impact you see. Um, so this, is, this can go up to as far as 400% increase in the click-throughs. I should explain that where we're sitting on here is actually the recommendation section um, to the right of the, uh, uh, of, the, of the picture. And that story is a brilliant story. If I've got time at the end, I'll, I'll explain what it is. I didn't get caught up in it, by the way. Um, so um, also you know, increases in, in, in um, bounce rate, decreases in bounce rate, and it's obviously a cross-platform cross solution. So there are many other um, industry ap applications uh, which are, are you know, very exciting. You have uh, everything from event prediction, sentiment analysis, uh, user clustering, text classification, topic extraction, predicting churn, predicting share prices, and scoring sales leads. We've already begun integrating the best of um, machine learning um, algorithms that are available, um, including deep learning, sentiment analysis, natural language processing, um, and we're constantly adding new ones. Uh, we want to make these available for people to sort of lower the barriers of entry for people to actually work with these uh, algorithms uh, rather than having a very closed environment where people are very secretive about what they are and how you can use them. So, for example, topic extraction we, um, is an algorithm that uh, can be used by uh, support companies uh, who handle lots of support requests and, and, and currently have these triage roles where people are manually putting support requests into buckets and routing them to the right people. 
that can be made much more efficient by analyzing the context and, and the content of the message and, and enabling that to be put, the topic to be assigned and for it to be put in, the right, in front of the right person. Share, um, share, prices, uh, share price prediction is based around time series data and prediction, predicting um, not just the um, actions of the individual, but also potentially the actions of a, of a larger group as well. So sort of the hot space, I suppose, is around like getting sort of an individual one-to-one -one, um, like recommendation or user experience, but the kind of white hot space of the future um, is to actually aggregate that on a larger scale. So for example, you take something like the Arab Spring, that was something that was able to be um, predicted far before it actually happened based upon some of the early signals that you saw from, um, from places like tw um, Twitter and social networks. So by creating an open platform and actually like laying it out there and enabling people to work with the code and, and to bolt on their own, um, uh, 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 their own internal algorithms and, and other third party libraries, uh, we've managed to create a, an environment where people are able to uh, deploy uh, the uh, algorithms which are necessary for them to solve their business problems. But it's not just about, uh, so, so just to explain in more detail, a, a microservices API is, is a, a way for a developer to write an algorithm in any coding language and for that to be bolted on to the end-to-end -end, uh, pipeline, end-to-end uh, -end solution which is monitoring, um, bringing in the data and then outputting, building the predict predictive models and then outputting the predictive scores or the recommendations. Uh, the third party libraries uh, include some fantastic technologies uh, that, for example, uh, Torch is a, a library which has been um, developed in, in combination with, uh, with companies like Google and DeepMind and Facebook. Uh, so there's a, a huge array of uh, amazing uh, algorithms that are at the disposal of the uh, of developers and data scientists, but how do you take those, the models that are being generated by those libraries and put them into production. And then there's, there's always going to be closed uh, APIs uh, and there are some fantastic, uh, some, some fantastic use cases for those uh, that uh, can still be deployed within an open environment. So take some of the ideas uh, that we've been talking about at Selden uh, of adding uh, new uh, bits of functionality into an open platform and try to extrapolate that to uh, think about how this could go in the future with different fields of AI taking the same approach. Uh, so I'll start with the question, would you rather a single organization controlled uh, artificial general intelligence and wield all of the power? Or would you prefer a distributed network of specialized nodes with no central point of control. For example, think of it like a blockchain, where you can take one of the, one of the blocks out, but it, it doesn't impact the entire um, network. There are already many different types of disconnected artificial narrow intelligences. They're everywhere, they're in your handsets, in your watches, in your cars, robotics used in manufacturing. With this comes enormous volumes of data and potential to, to generate uh, models uh, which can serve many different types of specific use cases. There's different companies are specializing in different fields um, so of, of AI. So, you know, Ben from uh, SwiftKey will be up later could be handling the NLP node. Uh, the chaps from DeepMind, uh, Mustafa and his team could be handling the ethics portion, for example and probably a few others. Could one route to artificial general intelligence uh, be to connect these artificial narrow intelligences in an open network? And how would we get there? In order to get there, one, exa one, 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 route, one, one thing that would be necessary would be to create an open standard, a protocol by which the, uh, the different nodes can communicate with each other. We're already starting to see uh, some developments in that space. We've been more focused around the prediction um, side of things. And there's a standard emerged called PMML, which stands for Predictive Model Markup Language. So this, it's already moving in that direction. And it's almost like an unstoppable train where any, um, any, any, any development which is actually worth 
uh, communicating and sharing uh, uh, for the good, good of, like the, the good of the whole. So the, the kind of the um, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Then then it's like someone is going to probably crop up and make that happen. So this isn't what we're doing today, uh, but this is a, 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 I suppose a, a future-looking um, concept of uh, of where things could go. Cool. So um, <coughs> before taking questions, um, I'll just uh, finish with a quick question. Uh, can we change the way in which people are viewing their competition in this space? Uh, AI is, is, a, is an area and machine learning where companies up till now, including us for the last few years, become very, uh, are very secretive and sort of closed about how uh, we explain what we're doing and, and, and it's you know, very sort of comp competitive market. London is um, turning into a center of excellence for uh, AI. Uh, obviously, we all saw the, the DeepMind um, uh, acquisition, uh, which really sparked things off last year. Uh, so since we went open source uh, in February, uh, we, we, I suppose we, we spent a few months in September sort of setting things in motion. And we've been blown away by uh, the, uh, I suppose, opportunities that have emerged through having a sort of open door policy when speaking to people who previously we considered to be competitors. So on that note, I'll ask everyone in the room to uh, uh, download uh, Selden's uh, open source platform, uh, which is available on GitHub. Uh, there's docs.selden.io for developers to, to check it out. And uh, it really is a glass-walled AI platform, um, completely end-to-end. -end. So uh, you know, speak to me or some of the other um, engineers who are here, here today from Selden uh, if you want to know about how to add machine intelligence or, or prediction or something on the, on the track towards that. Uh, machine intelligence in, into your business, but obviously there's a lot of AI companies in this room today, and there is an opportunity to, to plug your um, technology into uh, this ecosystem. So on that note, thank you.